what are the most common causes of flat tires? Now, we're not talking about tires that are completely flat. We're talking about those tires that are consistently dropping in pressure at a rate that's different to the other tires. And it really is important to just check our tire pressure regularly. Your car might be fitted with some kind of tire pressure monitoring system, but that really is a last resort. I've never had that warn me of low pressure as it happens. There's generally quite a big delay on the detected low tire pressure. I know some drivers check their tire pressures once a week. That's probably too much to ask for a lot of drivers. We lead quite busy life. We should certainly do a visual check on our tires just to make sure there's no obvious problems, but you won't detect minor drops in pressure just by visually looking at the tire or even by kicking it. We also have to know that a lot of our gauges for tire pressures are variable. They're not calibrated to great scientific levels of accuracy. So we've got to put up with what we've got. We've got to use the tools that we have. When we check our tires regularly, we'll notice that maybe one of them is much lower than the others. Now, it's normal for tire pressure to drop over time. You've got compressed air in a tight space that's made of rubber. Some of that pressure is going to escape. It's the laws of physics. You can't keep that pressure fully contained within a rubber tire. It just doesn't happen. But the rate at which that happens depends a lot on how we use the car. If there's a big heat differentials in the tire temperature as we drive it, and we're doing lots of burnouts, for example, or we're drifting, or just driving in summer and winter conditions, that can cause quite a big temperature differential. And that can go some way to accelerating the loss of pressure. But we've noticed that one tire is substantially lower than the others. And that happens every time we check the tires. So what's going on there? The first assumption we would make is there's a puncture. Now, invariably, a puncture is generally where you've got something embedded in the tire. If the tire was punctured, it would deflate fully. But if the object that's punctured the tire is still in there, it's typically a nail or a screw or maybe even a piece of metal or a very, very sharp, hard piece of glass. If that's become embedded in the tire, that can block some of the hole it's made and slow up the escape of air. Now, these can be quite hard to detect, but it's the most common cause of losing your tire pressure. The best way of detecting this is to get a soapy solution of water, a very soapy solution of water, and just to smear that all around the tire to inflate the tire up to the recommended pressure. And look very carefully at the tire. You will notice there are tiny little bubbles forming where this puncture is. It may also require you to just rotate the tire, move the car slightly so you can see the other side of the tire. And rather than do it in halves, because we're all a bit lazy, let's try and do it in thirds and make sure we thoroughly examine the tread on the tire. I have actually punctured two tires driving over a pothole. Don't get me started on the quality of our roads, but that was enough to actually split the tires. That was fairly obvious. I realized immediately as it had happened. And no, I wasn't driving driving fast. I was doing about 15 to 20 miles an hour because this country road was absolutely shocking. And I just caught this sharp edge on this pothole and both my near side tyres completely blew out. The only way of dealing with that is really to replace the tyre, whereas the way of dealing with a punctured tyre is generally to get it repaired. So if the damage is within the third middle of the tyre tread pattern, you can generally plug it. There's various methods out there. I won't discuss the methods that work and don't work in this video. If you take it to a specialist tyre repairer, they will repair it to the British standard or whatever the standard is in your region, and you'll get a good quality guaranteed repair. But if the puncture has happened toward the outside third, it's very difficult to repair those safely. So most tyre places will actually recommend that you replace that tyre. Now, another probably the next most common cause of tyre pressure loss is the valve, the valve stem. So if the valve stem is starting to leak, that will lead to a loss of pressure and they do degrade over time. A lot of people will go many, many years and even change the tyres and keep the original valve stems. I don't know why they do it. It's not a substantial additional cost to replace the valve stem. And most reputable tyre places will actually do a proper job and replace those. So don't cut corners there. Make sure you've had the valve stems replaced. And again, the little trick we did on the puncture with the soapy water, if you put that over the valve stem, obviously take the tyre valve cap off, but smearing the soapy water over 
you can see if air is escaping via that route. Now, the next problem that we might have with loss of pressure, we've got the tire connected to the rim. There's an adhesive used. And sometimes when we run over a pothole or we rub the tire up against the curb, it's just enough to break that seal. Maybe the tire has popped open and closed immediately. So the tire pressure loss is very, very slow but it's there nonetheless. And that really is down to that bad seal. But also the rim itself can become damaged. If there's a scratch or a score mark in there, that can allow the air to escape. When you fit tires, you check this beading around the tire rim and just make sure it's in good condition. The glue goes a long way to repairing faults and problems. If there's a definite crack in there or damage where the rim has come in contact with something very hard, that can actually deform the rim that will lead to tire pressure loss over time. If you've just had the tire fitted and it's losing pressure, it could just be it's not being fitted properly. In that case, I would go back to the place that fitted it and just ask them to check, particularly if the soapy water test revealed the problem to be around the rim, around the seal of the tire. Now you understand what the regular causes of a loss of tire pressure is, how to diagnose the fault and track it down. And hopefully this has saved you a little bit of money please boot the like button. That really does help us to get out there. And I've lined this video and this playlist up for you. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because we'd hate you to miss out on all this great content we've got. Thanks for watching. See you in this next video.